This is Twit. Okay, Patrick. So we've got our uh, pie hole running. It's it's up. It's it's running on uh, on our Raspberry Pi, which by the way, it will work on pretty much any distribution of Linux. I just like it on a Raspberry Pi because it's nice and small, and I can put it in the back of my data closet and forget it. Here's the thing, though: unless my computer, my client, is actually using the pie hole to do its DNS, mm -hmm. it doesn't do anything. It just sits there and, and yeah. looks pretty. What I need to do is I need to reassign the DNS. That remember that because that's part of the DHCP offer, right? DHCP right. gives me my gateway, it gives me my address, my lease time, my subnet, my DNS. Uh, so I need to change the DNS without changing the gateway. There's a couple of different ways to do this. I'm going to show you one right now. If you go to my computer, Alex, uh, this is a, the manual way to do it. So let's go to this, and this allows me to actually change manually the settings on my computer. I'm only going to do IPv4 because inside my network there's no real need for IPv6, not, not just yet. Uh, but this is all obtained automatically. That's, what, that's why it's uh, checked here, obtain an IP address automatically. I'm going to do this instead. Use the following DNS server, and I already set it up for 192.168.10.253. I have just told my client to go to that server, which is my, my pie hole, anytime it has a DNS resolution that it wants to, to, to resolve. Now, what I'll also do is because there might be a, a, a moment where my Pi server has died or it got unplugged or it's, it's unavailable, I'll also add a different a secondary DNS server. So I'm going to put 8.8.8.8. .8 now, that's only going to work. It's only going to go there if the, uh, the Pi hole for any reason is unavailable. Uh, but the cool thing about that, it means that even if it does go down, I'm not going to lose internet access. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to lose the ability to resolve a name. Uh, you could do this for every device on your network, but that becomes a pain. So uh, can you think of any other way we would do that? Uh, change the router to use that as DNS. Precisely. Good yeah. call, Patrick. So <laughs> in our router, let's go and go to this screen. In our router, this, again, this is DDWRT. You can use whatever interface you have. Every single one of them, however, has the ability to offer specific settings to, my, uh, to the clients. So this is the, the DHCP server. It's enabled right now. Um, I know that it's going to start at 100. So it's going to start offering addresses at 192.168.10.100. I know it, it will... Uh, uh, let's see, does this actually offer me uh, 50? So it'll go all the way up to uh, 192.168.10.149. But here, I can actually set what DNS server is going to be offered to a client that requests an address from the DHCP server. So I could put 192.168.10.149. And so by doing that, by putting this here, it means that any new client that connects to my network is automatically going to be given this gateway and that DNS server. So if it's an iPhone or Android, somebody's tablet, they're matter. all going through here. Doesn't so, matter. Yep. Yeah, because you can't put an ad blocker on an iPhone. Right. So you <laughs> have to, this is the, really the only way to do it. Yeah, yeah, DNS blocking. Yeah. Uh, now, I will say this. Uh, if... If you make the change, it won't affect devices already connected to the network until their lease expires. So the way that DHCP works is periodically, and you get this actually, go back to my, uh, my computer, uh, every 1,440 minutes on this router, it's going to demand that the client request another address. Uh, the problem is, if I change anything, it's going to be 1,440 minutes minus well, how much time has elapsed before it will, change, it will take the new settings. Uh, in that particular case, what you can do is drop the DHCP address and then, and then reload it. In, in Windows, that's actually kind of easy. I would just do this, IP config release, and then IP config renew. Uh, and it will drop the DHCP yeah. address, and then it will get the new settings. And in Mac OS, there's a button to renew the lease. Precisely, so. yeah. So just, just know that. This is, I, I like doing this because it, it means that anyone logging into my network will automatically get the benefits of my pie hole. But Patrick, you brought up during the break that there's, there are a couple downsides of doing this. Yeah. Uh, I was checking some sites, and they're really slow to load, yep. some of them. Uh, yep. CNN took a long time to come yes. up, and so did StarWars.com. And uh, other sites may not look right without the ads in there because some ads will collapse when they're not displayed. And as a result, the page looks kind of weird 
uh, MSNBC had some overlap mm -hmm. on some of their content. Uh, and also, you may want to actually have ads display on a site because you like that site and you, you want to support, support them, them and let them have whatever meager ad income they can get. Yeah, that that's one of the drawbacks to this kind of an approach, which is, is it's kind of an all or nothing thing. I mean, yeah, I can change it. I, I, I can manually change my DHCP, I mean, my DNS server back to something that's not going to block out ad domains, but I have to do that every time by going into the settings that I just showed you. That's where a software ad blocker might actually work yeah. a little bit better because you can turn it on and off with just a button on the browser. And you can whitelist certain sites. Precisely. Yeah. You, uh, this is no, uh, not quite yet. Now, there, there is something else I do want to show you. This does have a pretty cool interface. So this is the Raspberry Pi right now. It will show you how many queries it's blocked. It will show you how many uh, you know, different domains have been blocked. This, this has only been in existence for a couple of hours now, but you can already see that Google Analytics is leading uh, the charge. That's the one that's blocked most often, followed by, oh, well, let's, let's zoom so in So it here. even blocks Google Analytics. It does. So I'm not going to be able to tell who's looking at my site. Yeah, I, actually, if, you're, if you uh, use Google Analytics, uh, you can't log in to Google Analytics oh, when this is enabled. Whoops. You also can't log into Twitter Analytics or Facebook Analytics because those are all blocked. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's kind of oops, oopsie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is this is interesting. I, I kind of want to put this on the school network. And just <laughs> see how many. But but as you mentioned, this slows it down because folks, you are adding an extra device. Yeah. So this this is not a true DNS server. This is a pass through DNS server. It's actually getting its DNS results from Google. So whenever you request a DNS resolution, you go to the pie hole. Then the pie hole asks Google, then it comes back to you and gives you the DNS resolution for, for domains it's not blocking. Uh, that's that's going to add latency. Just, just know that. Just know that.